Hi and welcome to part 2 in the Particle Flocker tutorial series. Uh, this video is going to cover the basic attributes of a Particle Flocker node. So in Maya I have a simple test scene set up that has a group of particles uh, which are following a seek target and the locator is acting as the target. Um, I'm going to cover targets in more detail in the next video. For the purposes of this video, we are interested in the section of the UI which is entitled Particle Flocker Attributes. This section contains all of the global attributes that are associated with the Particle Flocker node and will affect every particle in the system. So starting at the top of the attributes, uh, we come to the number of neighbors. Now the way a flocking system works is that every single particle in the system needs to be aware of one or more of its neighbors. This is so that it can perform things like obstacle avoidance with neighbors, it can maintain the velocity of its neighbors, and it can maintain the flock centering of its neighbors. Now this value at the moment is set to 2, which means that every particle in the system is looking at its two nearest neighbors. Now we can increase this value to a larger number, which may or may not improve the realism of, of the animation. It kind of depends on how you've got your scene set up. For the majority of cases, a value of 2 is absolutely fine, but you can feel free to play around with this number to see if it improves your simulation. One thing to bear in mind is that the larger this number, the more expensive the simulation will become in terms of performance of Maya. Okay, so the next one down is Boyd Separation. This is a value that tells the system how far each Boyd will try to stay apart from one another. Uh, currently set to 2. If I drag this value higher, you can see that the Boyds start to move further apart. And this is basically just honoring that as a distance value in Maya. So I can bring this right down and the Boyds will become much closer together. And further apart again. And these values can all be animated so that you can give yourself some very interesting behaviors just by playing around with these values um, and give you some really rather uh, realistic animations. Next in the list is obstacle separation. Now this value only becomes useful once we start to introduce some obstacles into the system and that is discussed in a later video. The final two attributes are maximum speed and maximum force. Now these are essentially the driving force of all of the particles within the system. These are the two that you're more likely to be playing with at any one time. So I'm just going to set the separation back to two just to give us the same result we had earlier. Now maximum speed, as you might think, will basically give the particles a higher maximum speed within the system. So if I crank this up, you'll see that they all suddenly start to move much, much more quickly. Now in this case, they're actually overshooting the target and then trying to get back to it and so on. And what we are seeing though is we've seen a lot of bunching up of the particles when they reach the target. Now the main reason for this is because they don't have enough force to push apart on one another. And that brings us to the next attribute which is maximum force. If I increase this value, the particles all of a sudden have much more force to apply to one another and therefore try to honor the Boyd separation. So by playing around with the maximum speed and the maximum force values you can really start to get some interesting behaviors. So that's the end of this short video. Uh, in the next video I'm going to talk more about the targets and the different types of targets and the properties that are on them. Hope to see you in the next video.